sometimes assist is formed. Okay, rupture and immediately if that it is sealed off. Okay, if that is sealed off, the and a fluid accumulates that is called follicular cyst. A benign follicular cyst, which is after a normal developing follicle, such cyst can be multiple and contain clear fluid. And they may reach several centimeters. This is a follicular cyst. It is a benign condition. Hemorrhagic corpus luteum. What is corpus luteum? After ovulation, whatever is there in follicle that is called corpus luteum. If blood accumulates in that, it is called hemorrhagic corpus luteum. This is very easy. The dark red, black, black hemorrhagic hemorrhage. Can you see here? Hemorrhagic region surrounded by three nuclei. This is the hemorrhage. Actually, there is a lot of light here. If you see in your computers or in your mobiles, it will be very clear. Okay? Hemorrhagic corpus luteum, dark red black hemorrhagic region surrounded by three nuclei of yellow corpus luteum. This is ovarian torsion. Dark and enlarged from hemorrhage. Torsion, what do you mean by torsion? Torsion of ovary, torsion of testes. It comes at many places. Torsion means twisting. Once the ovary twists, what will happen? There will be loss of blood supply. Once there is loss of blood supply, blood starts accumulating in the ovary. So, a torsion, torsion of the ovary, ovarian torsion, it will be hemorrhagic. Dark and enlarged from hemorrhage after torsion. Torsion of the ovary is uncommon. Just remember that this is a torsion of the ovary. Yeah. Now from here it starts the main thing. Cyst adenoma. What is cyst adenoma? Yesterday we have discussed that tumors of the ovary, it is divided into groups. One is the tumors arising from the surface of epithelium, from the outer. Covering. So any tumor arising from there, it is called surface epithelial tumor. And in that it is divided into serous, mucinous. And in serous it is cyst adenoma, benign, borderline, malignant. Mucinous also same, cyst adenoma, mucinous cyst adenoma, benign, borderline and malignant. So if this is a case of cyst adenoma, okay. If this photograph comes, it will be asked, right? What is the diagnosis or what is this image? So it is a cyst adenoma. It is benign. Okay? And the feature of benign will be encapsulated, smooth, rounded structure. Okay? No need to remember all these things. Just remember unilocular, encapsulated, smooth structure. Okay? Understood? This is serous cyst adenoma. If you open it, serous means clear fluid. Okay? So if you open it, there will be a clear fluid and multiple cysts are present. Okay? This is cut off. This is cut and removed. So you are seeing here multiple cysts. Multiple fluid filled cavities which are smooth surface with nodular excrescences. Okay? Remember this why it is very important. I am telling you repeatedly because if it is a benign cyst adenoma, the inner wall will be smooth. Okay? If you just write smooth inner wall, it is enough for benign. Okay? And the lining epithelium will be Columnar. You can see here. In cyst adenoma, there is single layer. Because it is a benign condition, see, the difference between benign and malignant is in malignant there will be proliferation of the epithelium. So if there is no proliferation, it is benign. So here, if there is no proliferation, only single layer of epithelium is there. So it is lined by single layer of simple columnar epithelium and the cytoplasm is filled with mucin. 
If it is mucinous, it is mucin. If it is serous, it is tearful or serous. Cis adenomas, microscopic. See, you can see here. Single lining. So, in microscopy, if this slide is kept, see, if the slides are kept, there will be two slides. One of gross and one is microscopy. If it is benign, it will be a cis adenoma. I showed you previously. It will be this diagram. Okay? Along with it, you can have like this or like this. So in microscopy, you should write cis line by single layer of columnar cells. It is enough. If you write this, it is enough. Okay, next comes the borderline. Borderline means it is about bit, uh, bit in between benign and malignant. So there will be features. That it has a smooth surface, but opening will be papillary appearance. Borderline tumor have increased number of papillary excrescences. What do you mean by papillary excrescences? I told you yesterday. If inner wall is smooth, it is benign, and from inner wall there will be projection. Once the cells start proliferating, there will be projections of this. These projections are called papillary excrescences. Or papillae, if you just write papillae, you know. So once the papillae arises from the inner smooth wall, it becomes borderline. Is it clear? Okay. Smooth is benign, papillae is borderline, and if this papillae is full, full of, if the tumor is full of this papillae, along with features of all malignancy, that is increased chromatin, high NC ratio, all the features of malignancy, it becomes malignant cis adenocarcinoma. So smooth surface and bubbly means uh, borderline. It will be borderline. If, uh, uh, if the surface is not smooth and uh, finger like proje projection. Finger like projection and it will be nodular band. So that becomes malignant. So this is borderline. The application with complex border, but one or two set layers and minimum ATP. So these are all the papillae. If you see this papillae, the papillae are either one or two layers. Okay? So papillae it can be and by single or single layer or two layers, but they will be papillae. Remember this in borderline. This is a photograph of carcinoma papillation are visible on surface. I think you can't take it out here properly. This can get through the wall. By the time they are detected, cerebral carcinoma are often spread by spread to peritoneal line. Okay. This. I told you benign is over, cystadenoma, smooth wall, single or multiple cysts are there, okay? And borderline, papillae are there. And these papillae are lined by one or two layers of epithelium. After that, if there are more papillae and the cells are proliferating, the, these cells, they come out of the tumor and spread. So here it says, whenever you diagnose a cyst adenocarcinoma, it will undergo metastasis by the time it is diagnosed. Okay? So these papillary projections, they invade the wall. Okay? Here you can't see where is the wall. There is no wall. Only the full of papillae and you can see the cells, these all are malignant cells. Okay? So benign, borderline, malignant. Benign is single layer. Borderline is one to two layer, malignant is proliferation of this. Okay, there will be many layers of malignant cells. Is it clear? This is also the same. You can see here. What is this? Endometrioid carcinoma. What do you mean by endometrioid carcinoma? Metatrioid, if comes, it is endometrium like. Okay? So, if you see these, all these are, what are these? What does endometrium contains? Glands. Glands. Glands are bound by 
column non cells, corticoid, or whatever it is, glands are right. So, these all are endometrial glands. It is looking like endometrial glands, but these endometrial glands are not there in the endometrium. It is in the ovary. ovary. So, it is called endometrioid tumor. Okay? So, although it is arising in the ovary, but resembles endometrial carcinoma. Is it clear? Cyst adenofibroma. Cyst adenoma, you know. What is cyst adenoma? Just now we have discussed. If along with that, cyst adenoma, the cyst lined by single layer. If the cyst wall contains the fibrous tissue, it becomes cyst adenofibroma. Just add the fibrous tissue. So what is that? This is the fibrous tissue. This is the cyst wall, lined by single layer, and this is the fibrous tissue. So this is called so cyst adenofibroma. It's very simple. There are many terms, but if you just it's go through it, yeah, it is simple. Cyst adenofibroma. What is Brenner? Yesterday we have discussed in the lecture. Brenner is transitional epithelium, you know. Variant of adenofibroma, I told you. These are the nest of cells. Can you see here? This is the nest of cell surrounded by fibrous tissue. And these nest of cells resemble transitional epithelium. What you see in kidney, in urinary bladder, that epithelium is transitional epithelium. So this is the transitional epithelium, nest of transitional epithelium surrounded by fibrous tissue. This is called Brenner. You know what this terms? Brenner tumor is nest of transitional epithelium surrounded by fibrous tissue. What is teratoma? In lecture I told you, teratoma is a tumor which arises from all the three germ layers or two germ layers or more than two. What are the germ layers? Ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm. Any tumor, for example surface epithelial tumor, it is ectoderm. So it is only one, one germ layer. So any tumor, if it is arising from more than one, two or three, it is called teratoma. It is called teratoma. Is it clear? Okay. Now, these teratomas are divided into three. Mature, immature and monoderm. Mature means, you know, from ectoderm some organs arise. Some from mesoderm something arise. So if you are seeing that in the tumor, it is called mature. For example, teeth is arising, hair is arising. These are from ectoderm. Okay? If you are seeing teeth, mature teeth and hair in the tumor, it is called mature teratoma. And the other name for it is dermoid cyst. So this is mature. That means mature elements you are seeing inside the tumor. Teeth or hair or any mature thing. It is called mature. For example, if you are seeing the tumor but you can't make it, you just cut the tumor, only a solid component is there. There is no hair, there is no teeth, then it is called immature. And monodermal means a tumor is there along with only one structure will be there. For example, thyroid gland will be there inside that tumor. Though it is in the ovary, but I told you any structure which arises from ecto, meso, endo, it can come in teratoma. So mature means, yes, monodermal means a thyroid gland will come, only thyroid will come. So it is called monodermal. So is it clear? See this, mature cystic teratoma of the ovary, you can see here, these are the sebaceous glands. These cells are of sebaceous gland. This is blood vessel and these dilutional structures you are seeing here, this is the smooth vessel. So all these elements are, you are identifying it, it is mature. 
mature elements are there. It is called mature teratome. This is the microscopic structure, and this one is the gross. So, if teratome comes, you will get these two photographs. One will be of this gross, and second thing will be this. So, if these two comes, the gross we should write. The identification is diagnosis is mature teratoma. Okay. And in description, in gross, we should write the tumor consists of mature elements like teeth and hair. It will be very clear. You will see clear cut teeth, clear cut hair. So that comes in the gross description. In microscopy, you should write this sebaceous glands, blood vessels, and smooth vessels. So all these components are present in the microscopy. This is also mature teratoma. Respiratory epithelium. This is. Mucin producing cell, this is smooth muscle. And this is thyroid gland. All these elements are there, so it is mature teratoma. Is it clear? Yes. So, in lab only mature is there, so you need not worry about the mature and monodiamma and all this. So, only if you get teratoma, you get only mature cystic teratoma. Next comes disgerminoma. It is Another form of ovarian germ, it is a germ cell tumor and the male counterpart is seminoma and this tumor you can see a lobulated structure, solid and mostly occur in young women. Okay? So if this comes you should write a lobulated solid tumor gross. You just see and whatever you are seeing, you should write that. Okay? Just lobulated solid structure. And in microscopy, you are seeing here clear cells. Can you see here? This is the nucleus. And surrounding the nucleus, there is no cytoplasm. See this. If cytoplasm is there, it is very light pinkish, but most of these cells, they don't have any cytoplasm. So the neoplasm consists of sheets and pods of large polyandrine cells with large nuclei and what is cytoplasm. So this is this germinoma, it is a germ cell tumor and grossly solid lobulated structure and microscopy cells with large nuclei and what is cytoplasm. Only two words if you write it is more than enough. Large nuclei, what is cytoplasm and scan lymphocyte or even just you direct large nucleus watery cytoplasm it is enough ok is it clear okay. granulos and thickens and tumor variegated appearance with solid and cystic areas so this granulos and thickens is contained consists of solid and cystic tumor and few words about this thigoma fibroma. If fibro fibroma, you know fibrous tissue. Fibrous tissue will be grayish white. Thigoma is yellowish. So the tumor will be a part will be yellow, a part will be white. Okay? If thigoma is dominant, it will be more yellow. If fibroma is dominant, it will be no, more no. whitish. Actually, it is not clear here. And this is a benign tumor. Oma means it is a benign tumor. So the features of benign tumor you should write. Circumscribed, encapsulated, everything. And in microscopy, the fibroblast appearing sense of fibroma. Okay, in microscopy again the same. If it is fibroma, it will be fibrous tissue. Fibrous tissue is elongated. Wherever fibrous tissue comes, it will be spindle shape. The cells will be spindle shape with pinky cytoplasm and if it is thick coma the cells will be clear because these are lipid containing lipid will not take this state so clear clear cells mixed with fibrous spindle elongated spindle shaped cells with this fibroma thick coma what is this this is a normal fallopian tube this is the transverse section if you cut fallopian tube transversely you will see the papillary projections, the epithelium is thrown into folds. All this is the papillae of the fallopian tube. 
and one is in tubular diseases endometriosis what is endometriosis presence of endometrium outside outside the uterus so fallopian tube is outside the uterus so the presence of endometrium in the fallopian tube is endometriosis of fallopian tube you are seeing this this is the normal fallopian tube and here you are seeing endometrial glands this is the endometrial gland so it is endometriosis of fallopian tube ovarian abscess you know infections most common is neisseria other is chlamydia these infections it will cause form an abscess and you know all the pathology how the infection occurs and how the abscess is formed acute chronic inflammation you know everything there is no need to repeat all this acute inflammation what is acute inflammation dominated by neutrophils and the sequelae of acute inflammation is abscess so here also because of this infection neisseria infection there is inflammation and it is transforming into an abscess and this abscess is called tube ovarian abscess tube and this is the tube this is the ovary both are affected both are infected and both becomes a bag of pus the pus is there in fallopian tube as well as in the ovary so once there is pus what will be the microscopy it will be dead neutrophils okay the microscopy of pus is dead neutrophils pus is so all this is nothing but neutrophils serpentitis because because of the neisseria infection there is inflammation because of inflammation there is neutrophil so once there are neutrophils in microscopy you have to write all these are nothing but neutrophils okay so this lab is very lengthy only six or seven slides are important here teratoma cyst adenoma and this tubular tube ovarian mass fibroma thigoma if you remember the names it is enough all the others are the normal histology or just to explain you doctor uh, uh, teratoma cyst adenoma fibroma thigoma this germinoma and tubular ovarian Thank you.